Hey guys, so this is a video I've been wanting to do for a while now and I've had some uh, requests about it lately. I wasn't planning on doing it until after some of the EMC videos and then definitely after um, building a new workbench here. But with the part shortages and stuff, I'm actually still waiting on a lot of parts here. So it's gonna have to wait a little bit. So I'm just gonna kinda go into kind of detail on how running an assembly line, at least for us and me here was, and why ultimately the decision was made to pretty much stop doing any sort of production work and just for now keeping the equipment and just doing kind of small batch and assembly um, up to like 10, 15 units. But before I jump into that, the first thing I wanna go over for people who uh, might not have been following me for a while is just kind of what um, the setup here is and what type of equipment we have. So at the start, when we first started doing assembly, we had just a single um, printer. So it's a deck Horizon printer, a single eight head pick and place. It's an assembly on Opal and then we a five zone with one cooling zone uh, oven. That was all thrown in over on that space over there where the stub wall is. And obviously that was just a tiny space and we kind of outgrew that pretty quickly. So then about a year ago, we got a eight zone oven with two cooling zones built out this space. So now it's like 2,500, 3,000 square feet and then also got a through hole selective soldering machine. So that allowed us to do uh, through holes without having to do them all by hand, which obviously is not very pleasant. Um, and then with that, we got obviously more feeders, more space over here. So that's the bulk of the equipment that we have for uh, like production assembly specifically. We also have obviously uh, full rework, uh, inspection, uh, cleaning equipment, packaging, and then some other test equipment over here. But now the the bulk of the video is why was the decision made, I guess, ultimately to get into this line of work and get an assembly line, and then why was the subsequent decision made to get out of it and go back to just design work. But before that, if you haven't already, I'm sure most of you have by now, but if not, please join the Discord. The invitation will be in the description down below. So the first thing I think I wanna go into is why did I decide at the start of this, which was probably close now to three years ago, why did I decide to set up an assembly line? And other than just the obvious of being able to expand the business, work around cool equipment, there was a pretty good opportunity. One of the clients that we had done a lot of design work for, uh, a lot of these big like LED panels and control boards for them, they were not happy with how their boards were getting assembled and they pretty much um, gave us the opportunity if we were to get assembly equipment to start doing all of their assembly. And financially, with that client and then obviously picking up some others, it ultimately seemed kind of like a no-brainer. So with a lot of hours of research and contemplating, I decided to make the plunge and go full force, mainly hinging on um, that client. I knew we had the ability with some others that I'd spoke to to get additional work, but ultimately it was tied in uh, with that one client. We took the plunge and with, like I said, the half of the assembly line, we got it fully outfitted and within a few months, a lot less than I had expected, honestly, we got it set up and we're running boards for that client. So before I get into the reasons why I got out of this, I'd like to talk about some of the, uh, some of the positives and some of the things I really enjoyed and I will absolutely miss with running boards. The first of which is you get an incredible amount of satisfaction starting with a bare board, throwing it in the start of your line, and then in minutes later, you have a fully assembled board, and then if you're doing functional testing, you test it. 
you get that sense of satisfaction with design work, obviously, but there's something different about when you're assembling a bunch of boards and at the end of the day, seeing 100, 200, 500 boards assembled, that is really neat. The other thing that's really cool is all the equipment. Um, I mean, what, what person, what engineer doesn't like dealing with and seeing all this incredibly cool and expensive equipment on a daily basis so that absolutely is a is a very neat thing especially the pick and place pick and place is one of the coolest pieces of equipment uh in an assembly line and i think in general topped only by maybe some like milling machines and then from the business perspective the main reason that the assembly line is very nice is it gives you the ability to take one of our design clients that would be a maybe a one or two time client and turn it into a continuous stream of income. And that's obviously one of the goals in business is if you have the ability to create reoccurring business, that is a, not a guaranteed, but a predictable stream of income, that is very helpful. And one of the biggest disadvantages of a design shop like we primarily are, you can go through lulls to where you don't have a lot of work and then the next month you are slammed having the assembly line, the goal was to kind of smooth out those ebbs and flows and to give us kind of kind of like a continuous baseline of work to be coming in. The, the final, and obviously there's, there's more, but the final uh, really neat thing about the assembly line that at least stands out is more on the client side, is it's really cool being able to design a board for a person or a company and then being able to say, hey, we have this finished board, you've tested it, we've tested it, you're all ready to go to market. You don't have to pitch it to someone else and go through the assembly documents, manufacturing, test, all that. We can handle it. So being able to have a complete seamless transition from design to assembly is a really big perk. And some of our clients that we got later on that was the main point. It's we can do the design, we can go to assembly, manufacture, done. So that is a big thing. And while we obviously have uh, contacts with other assembly lines, there's always going to be a little bit more friction now than there was before. Now, now the not so positives. And I would say if, if you talk to anybody in this industry or if you do any amount of research, Kind of the general consensus, and this is what was absolutely the case for us here, is it's rarely the big things that mess you up. Yes, equipment breaks down and you have to repair it, of course. But it's always the little things. Like we would have a joke, me and, me and Chris who worked here uh, the majority of the time for the assembly line, it was just the little things that add up. You would rarely have a big issue, but you're going in to do a job. One of the parts was wrong that you ordered. Uh, one of the solder paste that you had a profile with isn't working for this board. Um, one of the test fixtures you had, one of the pins got bent, so now you can't test the boards. Or even more so recently, one of the parts is now out of stock. You have to do parts crosses. Uh, you're assembling a board, one of the connectors starts lifting in your when you're doing pin and paste. Now you have to design a little fixture to hold down the connector. It is unbelievable the amount of little itty bitty just nuances that will drive you crazy. And that's the stuff, one, you can't prepare for, and two, it's just infuriating because it's not a large issue that you would ever expect. Following up on that, the other big thing that I did not expect is ordering parts is incredibly difficult. I, I don't think that you can be a successful CM or even an OEM if you don't have somebody who is essentially exclusively ordering your parts because whether it's a part cross, whether it's parts going out of stock, it is unbelievably time consuming having to order parts every single time you go and run boards. Something that I alluded to earlier, obviously, is the expense. The equipment's expensive, the pay, ev everything is expensive. But the one other thing that comes with that that I didn't expect is while obviously this this can be quite lucrative and on a big job the margins uh the gross margins dollar wise are pretty good 
the margins percentage wise can be pretty terrible. So it's not an uncommon thing for you to be spending tens of thousands of dollars on parts and boards for a job to then be only making five, ten thousand dollars on that. So if there's a single issue with that board and you have to reorder or something wrong with the parts, your entire profit's gone. So a single mistake on that board, God forbid you load a part wrong in the pick and place, that entire order, all of that upfront cost is out the window. Leading into that, one of the very small issues that can turn into a monumental disaster is loading the pick and place. If there's a single resistor, a single capacitor, anything that is loaded wrong and you don't have a system in place that catches it, you just assembled 10, 50, 100, 500, 1,000 boards wrong. Depending on how significant that part issue is, those entire boards either need to be reworked, scrapped, or something else. Fortunately, that is something we never had because we implemented a pretty solid quality control system that, to our knowledge, caught every single issue with that. And that was something I was very anal about because that's about in this industry, that's about the biggest issue that you can have is doing something upstream that results in you assembling a significant amount of boards incorrect. Something I'm sure some of you are familiar with if you've ever sold any amount of boards that you've kind of hand assembled on like Tindy or, or something else like that, is trying to find any sort of information online, um, whether it's like EV blog or the other big one is SMT net. It is very cryptic. Uh, a lot of these, especially CMs, OEMs, they just don't really care too much either way. But a lot of the big CMs, they seem to thrive and they seem to want to keep all of their information secretive, which more power to them, they can. But if you have an issue that you can't just resolve um, by trial and error and you need to get information somewhere, it is very, very, very difficult and people hold a lot of these things near and dear to them because it becomes a trade secret. So when you have all these little nuances, it becomes almost a full-time job trying to solve them. Ultimately though, the issues that I have brought up, um, they're more process orientated and in logistical issues. And we solved a lot of them or we could have solved them. What it really boiled down to is honestly my well-being and kind of my mental health. This, this whole endeavor was by far the most stressful, the most uh, painstaking, the most monumental effort that I have ever, ever endeavored with um, and nothing else compares. And it got, it got to the point to where every waking hour, if I wasn't here working, I would be on my phone uh, researching. I would be at home on my computer. I would wake up in the middle of the night with a random thought that might solve something we have. I'd wake up with a horrible dream that we assembled boards wrong. And it got to the point to where not only was I regretting everything about doing this, I was regretting my entire decision to get into and start my own company. And the really tough part about it is it's the old sunk cost fallacy. And it wasn't ever so much about money because not to get into the nitty gritty, financially this ended up being, being like a wash. It, it didn't really matter either or. But with the sunk cost fallacy, it was my time. I can't even imagine how many hundreds, thousands of hours I have put into this. And the idea of just kind of saying, no, I, I, I don't think it's working and walking away. It wasn't just that it felt like a failure, it just felt like a complete and monumental waste. So that was kind of the battle that, that I was fighting for probably the last the last six months of this, really bad, but probably the 
whole year leading up to making this decision. And that decision, I believe, was like December of last year, January of this year. Uh, and in the midst of COVID, that's obviously another thing. COVID uh, affected how many clients uh, were building boards. Then the chip shortage, thank goodness, I am not still in this industry with the chip shortage or that would be an absolute nightmare. I don't, I, I didn't want to go down just some tangent uh, and some sob story, but that's, that's ultimately what it boiled down to. I got my degree in uh, mechanical engineering. My entire life has been engineering, designing, taking things apart, and that's what I enjoy. I, I don't enjoy the, the constant tedious assembly the dread of, oh no, did we do something wrong? Is there something we could do better? And putting those together is what ultimately made the decision kind of a no-brainer. It doesn't matter financially. It doesn't matter anything else. If you're not happy with what you're doing, and not just happy, if you're miserable with what you're doing, you obviously have to make a change. So. That's when December, January, I decided to still for now keeping all the equipment, but we're going to be using it explicitly, like I said at the beginning, for prototypes, for evaluation of a new design, maybe five, 10 boards, but anything above that will pitch to a, a full service CM who, who can handle the, the stress and handle all the nuances with it a little bit, presumably, a little bit better than I and we could. If you've made it, if you've made it this far in the video, I pretty shocked, but I appreciate it. Um, something I'm going to be working on that I've also seen some people uh, be interested in is kind of some of the things that I've learned about running an assembly line. I've got some video ideas uh, coming up, like solder paste selection, um, just kind of how to do a like a professional company. How do we assemble like a one-off prototype? Is it worth getting a, a desktop pick in place? Is it worth doing it by hand, something in between? Uh, so I probably, I don't know how many videos if I can make a full series on it, but I definitely would like to make a few videos and just kind of see how it goes from there. But I really appreciate it if you watched this entire video and don't know if you learned anything from it, but at least maybe a little insight with with some of the nuances of running uh, really any business and especially any sort of manufacturing. But again, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.